Alright, so today what we'll be doing is we'll be continuing our discussion of thread. So I'm going to do an example here, a very simple example, illustrating how threads can communicate. Because last time we started, and what we we're doing is we just created a variable, we assigned it to a thread, and the th threads are using it. But in reality, what happens is you have to make sure that the threads do not what, overwrite the work that they are doing. So for example, I'm just using in this case. Um, let me just pull it out. Hopefully, it will look better in. So this is a, an example of a class that contains some information, right? And what we are going to do is we are going to have two threads share this information. But as I said before, the main problem with threads is the more threads you have and the more information you have the more likely that someone else will overwrite someone else's data, right? Because maybe someone is writing a file, the person hasn't finished, and another person starts writing to the same file. Or someone has an array, he's adding something to it. And you've done linked list, so you know how dangerous the linked list is. Anytime you're inserting something, you have to modify the head and the tail, or the two pointers. What if someone starts modifying and another person didn't wait? The other person will start modifying. In the end, your data will be, what, will be corrupted, right? You can also see this in um, something like Windows. These days, when you are installing and you try to install two things at once, Windows will tell you that what? Someone else is already installing, right? So there are some practical applications in, in uh, I would say, most of technology. Because they realize that if they do not have some way to make sure that when you have two threads going, you don't control the access to the data, the data will become corrupted. So in the case of the installers in Windows, for example, it will be very annoying if one program is installing, has made a folder. Another program installed, made a folder. But if they, if they have done one after the other, then they know that, oh, this is the folder I made. And maybe someone it was there before I came, as opposed to assuming. So you have two programs that are installed into the same folder. If they all assume that the folder was in there, when you uninstall the what? They may delete the folder. Because usually when you uninstall it, you remove the folder you came with. But if he knows that, oh, someone went first and made a folder. And then the second one started and also made a folder. He knows the folder was there before he was, he was installed. So when uninstalled, he will not delete the contents. So there are some practical applications to making sure that threads or processes that are working in parallel respect the information that's there to try and keep things consistent. Um, it doesn't even have to be so because you can, as far as install it, you can pick these days where you're installing to. So I'm, I'm conceding that, yes, usually programs to install different folders, but if you are installing to the same folder, which some, some of us do for stupid reasons, you can run into that issue where one person installs and wipes a folder thinking like he was the only person who installed to that folder. Right. These days, some of them are even smarter just by leaving some, if they are shared files, they'll leave them. But my point is that if things are not properly communicated, corruption or loss of data can occur. So you can also see this in uh, these days if you are using something like Excel, Word, and so on. These days when you open one file and you try and open it again, it will warn you that somebody is already working on the file. So there are a lot of uh, behaviors that we are seeing in software now. And you are seeing that they are actually aware that there are multiple what, processes working. They don't assume that they are the only person working. So for today's task, we are going to see how do you prevent two processes from getting into conflict when they are sharing data. To do this, I have created a very simple class. It took me just, yeah, you can do this in two, three minutes. It's not a very large, uh, large piece of code. The most important thing here is I'm introducing you to the concurrent Java util concurrent locks. Right. So in here there is re-entrant lock. So there are locks which are just uh, mutex. That's one person locks, one person can unlock. If something is locked, you cannot continue unless the previous person unlocks it. So the concept of introducing this, um, this particular artifact is to make sure that whenever you need to do some locking, you can lock, uh, you can put a lock on the, should I say, the lock exists, but to lock this will be my lock dot lock, and to unlock it, my lock unlock. But then that means that two different threads who have access to this object can then what? 
play with the locks in a way that they will not conflict with each other. So I've created, and you see there's a resource. There's a resource called, and it's a link list with some data. Right? But in order to make sure that I just don't access the link list immediately, I will try and lock or unlock before what I use the data in the link list. So is everyone okay with the resource? So you see I've encapsulated the resource into some class. And I have in the class a lock that would, I will use to control this. And I have the data. So please, just writing this does not mean that your code is thread safe. I think you've heard about thread safe when you're writing some programs. I think PHP. So, okay, so those of you who have not read the documentation, just install things. If Let's say you download PHP. They are in the PHP download folder, they'll say this version of PHP is thread safe. This version of PHP is not thread safe. This version of MySQL is thread safe. This version is not thread safe. So when they say something is thread safe, it means that the people who coded it have taken into account the fact that multiple threads can be running. If you download something and they tell you that this is not thread safe, and you decide that, oh, you are going to run multiple threads in that program, that means that they could what? If it's a database, they could be collaborating each other. Or if it's, let's say, a web server that's running, that means resources, requests can be overwriting each other. Right. So that's the main issue with this. So what I'm doing is, even if you have this and you do not follow good logic, your code will still produce wrong results. I hope you understand. Just declaring variables doesn't make your code correct. I think we all know that by now. That if you start, you can declare one million variables, your code will not become any more correct. It depends on how you use the variables to accomplish your task. Right. So this is the lock. Right. Now let's look at uh, the producer. So I have two, um, two blocks of code. Right. Producer consumer paradigm is something that all technology people must be aware of. Right. Because in almost any situation, you can have a producer and a consumer. If you have Wi-Fi router working, your laptop is sending packets to the router. The router is going to send it somewhere else. There is producer-consumer paradigm working. That means that information is sent or some resource is sent from one place to the other, and someone consumes it, and they also pass it on. So you can use this in many, 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 many systems. Email, producer-consumer is working. You try to send an email, it will maybe stack them up or put them in a queue, or we'll start sending. If it's sent, someone has going to consume that email. He may also pass it on, right? Or even if you are doing simulations. So some people ask me, oh, can I simulate um, a game or Ghana or something? Producer, producer, consumer can work. Someone buys something from another person, producer, consumer. So a lot of the systems that you have, this concept of producer, consumer is in there, right? So we'll see this coming up very soon. But I want us to go through the code. The code in the text is a lot of C, C++. But most people have done Java. And a lot of um, applications people are doing these days, even for the mobile, people are using Java. So I'm using Java a lot in this class so that people can utilize the concepts in the class going forward. So you can see that this producer has a reference to my resource that would point to one of the resources that he wants to control. He has a sleep time. I do this so that I can control how often or how much they sleep. Zero is not a very good sleep time. It's not really sleeping if it's just zero. Right. It has a name. And the constructor is made up of the name, the resource, and how much it should sleep. So it means that if I tell this producer that your name is maybe Kofi, here's a resource, sleep for two minutes. That means that you, you produce something and then you sleep. You produce something and then what? You sleep. So that means I can have producers, so not just one producer. The way it's designed now, you can have multiple producers using the same resource. Because what? I'm just in my construct. I'm going to pass it to it. Now, if you go to this, it is implemented as a runnable, meaning I'm going to be running threads with this. And aside the runnable, I also have in here the run function. If it's runnable, you have to implement run. And I have a while loop, meaning this thing is what? Continually going to be producing things. At the beginning, you realize he says that my resource, the lock, and he says lock it. So it means he's going to try and lock the resource. So there's a variable he's using to lock. So when you're coding, if you had two, three, four resources, that means that every resource must have a corresponding lock. It's like houses. If you have houses and every door, that means every door must have a remote control. Someone must try and grab it and press. And that means that he's in control. If you don't, are unable to. So if I didn't have any lock, that means that you just go ahead and try and use that specific object without being aware that someone else. For most of you these days, uh, up to this class, maybe you have just been writing your code. You have not been worrying about there's another thread using the same thing. 
But going forward from this class on, I hope that when people are writing code, they think of how can I have more parallelism in my code to take advantage of all the calls that exist. And also, if you are going to do that, then you need to add in the locks. And if you are going to share something, you have a lock associated with that thing you are sharing. So that's what this producer is doing. He says he's going to lock. He's going to, and it's a link list. So he says that this is a link list. He's going to add, he's putting his name there, producer, added, and there's a, an I. There's a counter that every time he adds something, he puts it in there. Right. And then when he finishes, he unlocks it. Meaning that what someone else can then go and take the resource and use. Right. So that's the main concept. Similarly, so after this, he sleeps. The code for the consumer is very similar. Um, Let's get the consumer code out. Right. The consumer also has very similar definition. Producer consumer almost the same. The only difference is that the consumer, after he does the lock, after he gets the lock, he's going to what? Remove something from the list. Right. So I hope that you are, you are seeing this concept. For one person, he locks it, and then he what? He can add to the list. For another person, he locks it, and then what? He can consume. That means he's what? Removing something from the link list. And after he consumes, well, he's printing. But I think, okay, so should I print here? So this is just a design question for you. Should I be printing here or after I do my unlocking? What do you think? So this is case two. And the first one, case one. Should I print before I unlock or unlock before I print? Both of them will work, but in terms of performance, which one will be better? I should have printed before I unlock. I have a shared resource. It's like you, are, you went to the canteen to buy food, and you are standing there, and you decide to call your friend to say, oh, hello, I just bought, and you are still in the queue. You are still holding on to the shared resource. So again, I ask, should I print before I unlock, or should I unlock before I print? I should unlock before I print. Because between the lock and unlock, all the things I'm doing there, I may be blocking people from proceeding. Do you understand the point? The same way human beings we work. If you are holding onto a resource that's shared, it's like, I don't know, those people that get at the intersection, that is when they are making a phone call. So they stop. Both codes will work. There's nothing wrong with the code. Both logics are, are fine. But I'm asking, do you do more work between lock and unlock? Or do you try to remove the work outside of lock and lock? Are you understanding the question? Both codes are valid. They will work. So why do you want to print before you unlock? Mm -hmm. So, so long as you have removed it, it's fine. You have removed it. It's almost like if you are already registering for a class. So long as you have removed it, you shouldn't say, oh, while the person is still uh, displaying, you can, you've removed it. You have removed the resource. It's no more there for everybody. I hope you understand the point. There's something you want. Let's say you are going to pick, uh, maybe DBLA. You are going to pick a ticket number or a bank. You are picking a ticket number. If you've picked the ticket, why are you still standing there? Is that the time when you call and say, oh, hello, honey, I got a ticket? And you are still standing in the queue. I hope people understand my point. Or you are not, you are not getting the point. Right. So, yes, code. Just a sec. As far as code, you can write as much code as you want. But sometimes you have to ask yourself, is this code good or bad? And small changes. Sometimes, if a good coder sits on the team, you can see that the code runs very quickly. Things can perform. If you are just one person on one laptop, it doesn't seem to make a difference. But once more and more data gets added, and more and more people are using the system, that is when you'd actually start to see some of these, that they print. So printing is something that can be, uh, for those who don't code a lot or write a lot of code, that is a lot of data. Printing wastes a lot of time, because usually it has to come to the screen. And I mean, before it comes to the screen, it's still holding onto a resource. Someone else can't take the shared thing and continue. You had a question before. But you've left, okay, so that is the important thing about this. Remember that for this one, 
the resource is a, a linked list, right? So the link, that linked list is the shared resource. But the contents of it, people can come and pick things and go. So long as you have removed the string that you want and you have gone away, the rest of it should be what? Available to everyone else. You are not taking the whole list link to, pr to print. If you are printing the whole link list, I would say, lock it, print the whole thing, and then what? Unlock. Right. So it's not that you are, you are, you are still uh, continuing to print the whole link list. In this case, he's just removing one item, and he calls it data from resource. He's removing one item from the link list. But once he's removed it, no one else can see that item he's removed. Only he has it now. And then he can go ahead and print. So are people cool with that point? The link list has many things in there. It is those little links. The, I think usually you have head tail. It's those things that are causing the issue. So that means that the whole link list considered as a whole. That's what we consider shared. But once you remove something from it, you have gotten your piece. You can leave the rest for someone else. Right. So there was a question from... Yeah, so the moment you unlock it, that means you have left it for someone else to use. It, it's no more in there. So if I have a link list and the producer puts in some data, such as maybe, um, hello world, and someone says hi, and I come and remove this from the link list. So that means that the link list had now one thing. And another class, which is the consumer, currently has pulled the hi. You can leave the link list alone. You are no more... You don't need that whole thing. Inside the link list. So if I removed... Yeah, but if you call a remove on a link list, the, the item is no more in the link list. No, like, you change the item inside Or if you just change it, and then you left it alone, then someone else can access it. Yeah, you'll be printing what is in there. Yes, yeah, so, so he's right. So if you have something... And you take it, you take it off, or if you just modify, you must be careful that what you don't keep hold of it. So, for example, so his point is, so please, it's a slightly interesting question, but let's take it. So his point is that if you have the link list, right? If just because you've called a lock and you called unlock, doesn't mean that you are using the link list properly. It's possible because I still have the reference. Just because I've unlocked, doesn't mean that I can't misbehave and what go and touch things I'm not supposed to touch. I hope you're understanding. Just because you call lock, and then you unlock. So outside this unlock, there's nothing to stop me from doing my resource dot my lock dot add hello. But this is not good behavior. I hope you understand my point. If something is shared, you, it's best you have a lock for it. So yes, you want to construct all the cases. Oh, what if I, I took it and someone is, is modifying it? If it's properly coded that, oh, this is a shared resource. Someone has taken an item. Why is someone else still having access to that item? Right. So this code can be very... Um, it's one of the hardest things to debug if you haven't planned it properly. Because the errors, if you are not thinking properly about things, the errors will be things that are almost random. You're like, oh, it worked for two days and then it stopped working. Maybe it worked because the threads were in a way that this one runs, this one runs, this one runs. What if the timing changed? Then all of a sudden, you are in trouble. Right. We are just printing a string. You unlocked it. Now somebody has also come to unlock and done something with that thread that you're working with mm -hmm. inside it. You will print your old data. So it's it's possible. So please, when you are doing these things, you must be careful, right? That as much as possible. If you are printing something that so that's why I said, for example, if you are printing the link list, lock the list before you print. I hope you see my point. If you are printing the link list, why is that you, you get the lock, you get a reference, and you start printing while someone else is using it? That is not good behavior. I am talking about good behaving code. You shouldn't be uh, modifying things when someone else is what? Or you're not getting my point. That's the point of this whole class. Don't be modifying things when someone else is what? Is also writing to it. That's my whole point. Right. So telling me, oh, now it's a, it's a class. It's the same point. If it's a class and someone took it and modified something, 
if he was going to print, he should what? Maybe print it in the lock. That's I said at the beginning. Print it in the lock before what? you unlock. In this case, it is one value. I've removed the value entirely from the linked list. It's no more there. So my point is still valid. But however, I said before I did this that if you were printing the whole linked list, lock, print the whole list, and then what? Unlock. Because that whole linked list is being shared. So if you were going to print it, or some people will take, copy some information to some variables and will print those variables, as opposed to printing the actually shared variables. Okay, so next question. The moment you lock it, people can no more access. If you are following this code, people cannot what? If it's locked, people cannot also get a lock on it. Right. So this is the first type of lock. This type of lock, when someone locks, so there are about three. There's a, this one, which is like a mutex. So it's locked and locked. There's a read-write lock. The read-write lock works a lot like files in the system. If someone gets a read lock, many people can be getting read, 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 read. But the moment someone tries to write, that means that all the readers must what? Must unlock before the person who is writing, because this is the, the complex one. But once a writer is in there writing, readers are not allowed to read. Right? So there's, there are different types of locks, but this one in particular is just a simple lock. You unlock, you lock. But my point is, if something is shared, as much as possible, access it within the lock. That includes, yeah, if you create a student class, if you wanted to print, I would lock it, print it, and then unlock. Because what if while you are printing, someone starts to, or something that was in there, someone starts to change it. That means that you could be printing a transcript, and at the beginning, by the time you end, someone will see the GPA calculation is not correct. Because while you are printing a transcript, someone else has what? Added or removed certain courses. So that can happen. That's why I said that between those, if there's something that you don't own, in this case, he has removed the entire string. He, he now has it. He can print it. But it can be the case where he removes it, and then someone else has a reference, and is still using. The code will fail. You have to plan things carefully. So let's run this. We are going to um, see how the, the main works. Right. So I have two of these. Um, this is very fresh code. So if it crashes, you have to forgive me. Well, so I have um, my producer, which is okay. He's fine. All right. So the producer is supposed to get a name, um, a resource. So let me go and make the resource before I, I do this. So my resource. I was hoping that when I finish this, I'll let you go so you can start coding this. So I'll try and do this producer consumer thing very quickly so I can release you. So if I finish before, when is the class in 10? Oh, I, won't, I won't make it. But I'll try my best. Right. Um, sleep time is not defined. So I have, am I missing still something? Um, sorry. Okay, so I have made one producer. Um, the code is a little bit light. I'm going to. Aside the producer, what I'll do is, he's a thread, right? So he has to what? He has to start. And to make a thread, that means I'll say thread, um, my producer thread is called new. I think people are familiar with this code now, right? You make something that's runnable, you put it in a thread, and then what? You can call, um, this is my producer thread dot. Okay, I'm going to play around just by doing run first of all. In the producer class, I'm going to print some of the things that he's doing. So he has this, he says, lock, and then he adds something. But let me print what he's adding so that people, we can see when he's actually adding. Right? Are people okay? I'm going to have him do some print so that we can see when he's, he gets to the point of adding, when he's, he's added, when he's not added. Okay, so I'm going to do system dot print line producer this one. 
is about to lock. I just want to do this so we can see when he's locking, when he's unlocking. So the producer is about to lock. When he locks, I'll say has locked the resource. Right. When he has added, I'll say he has added something. Has added I. And then when he unlocks, I'll also add a print statement for that one so we can see all the stages has unlocked. Right. And then when he's sleeping, before he sleeps, I'll say he's about to sleep so that we can all see he's about to sleep. And when he wakes up, we also have has woken up. So we have put in some print statements. The print statements have made it nasty, but we are just putting the print statement so we can tell what is happening with this producer. So I'm hoping that by the end of this section, everyone will be cool. So I'm going to run this. Alright, so you can, let me just uh, make this something like settings and then make this very large. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, so let me restart him. So restart, stop, and start. So you see, he's the only person running and he's about to lock, he cannot sleep. So he's doing every second. He has an integer counter that he's counting. So you can see that what? It's changing. The value is changing. Right. So this is just one. Right. So let me stop this. I am now going to put in two producers. Right. right. Now, before I unlock, so one of the things that I was pointing out before, which someone was asking about, before I unlock, I'm going to print the size of the list. So that you can see how it is changing after someone adds what, what the size is. So I'm going to say system the out of print line um, producer this dot my name has made the size and I'll add um, it is my resource dot my data. So he's going to print out the size anytime he modifies it. Right. Now, currently I have only one producer that is producing things. Right. But to make things more exciting, I'm going to add second producer so that they can have a little bit of a competition. Right. Now this producer, Kofi and Amma, okay. Amma is going to be producing a little bit faster. 500, well, 500. So one of them is my producer one, my producer two. Right. Producer one is going to produce. This should be, sorry, my thread one, one. Please note that if you are coding something that's very large, you can put these into an array. You don't have to keep doing this thing I'm doing. Um, okay. Now, if I run this, will Amma ever get to run? Amma is number two. Will she ever get to run? Someone saying no. How many people are saying yes? Yes or no? So those who are saying yes, why would it get to run? Please come. Okay, so it's actually not going to be the case though, but let me run it just so we can see. Because it is one process that is running, he's never getting to run the other one. He has only one mind. The thread, when I say dot run, it wasn't thread starting. There's a difference between dot run and dot start. Dot run is just a method call. That method call, that does what? The loop. So calling that, that means that Kofi is going to run forever and ever more. Amma will never ever get to Amma. Unless Kofi somehow uh, returns from that thread, then Amma can do something. Right. So this is an important, um, hello. Okay, so currently the code is not parallel code. It's only one code that's running. I just called the method called run. I didn't start a thread. I didn't do a fork. All I did was I called what, run. 
the run method as it stands is some, okay, sorry, this is Java's run. I was trying to jump back to my own producer run. There's a run code, but that run just does what? An infinite loop. Because I just call the method, that method will run forever unless I stop it. Right? So even though it is sleeping, it is the whole process that is being forced to sleep. He doesn't have two minds. Right? So this is a nice, a nice question that shows up. So these questions, I do ask these, and I can have like the code quiz we had today. Something simple to test your mind. So this is a very, a very nice one. So please, you must understand the code you are writing. Because I can imagine that someone can go and sit there for about two days trying to say, I've written my code, I wrote the producers, I wrote the consumers, and it's not working. And maybe what? You, didn't, you weren't aware of how to start threads. So not run, but what? Start, right? Now, if I start... So let's keep our fingers crossed that they do not... Okay, so you can see Kofi and Ama are now competing vigorously. Right? So people keep adding, people keep... It's a lot of... But there seems to be something... Yeah, something is wrong with the size. Something is happening with the size. Okay, so let's pull this out and see what is happening. Okay, so Amma was the one who was sleeping at... Right? So you can see that Amma starts on and says, I'm about to lock. Kofi 2 was about to lock. Kofi, they both printed that they were about to lock. What you are seeing that Amma goes first and says, she has locked the resource. And you realize that until she has let go of that thing, Kofi can't, can't do anything. Right? The best goal is if I do, uh, please, there's a difference between system.out.print line and system.air.print line. System.out.print line is an opportunistic print. You ask to print. It may or may not get there at the time you want. Right? But system.air.print out, that would usually print immediately, even if something crashes. The, the error output will come before it crashes. But the out is just saying you want to print the screen. But something will happen and it won't get there at the time you want it to get there. I hope people understand. Air is like emergency printing. And that's why when, uh, for these, when it does air printing, for some of the code, it makes it red or something, just so you know that this is an error message at a higher precedence level than, sorry, like priority than the normal printing. So system on the out, system on printing are different. So you are seeing this. So Amma has made the size one, and then she unlocks, she can sleep. Right. Now, the moment she, she sleeps, now Kofi can go ahead and what? Can hold the resource. Right. So two people can print something, but then only one person was allowed to, what? to lock. So the person who did the, the unlocking, sorry, the lock, he has to unlock and then go off before what? the other person can come in. Right. So Kofi now has gone in, has made the size, he added one, has made the size two. Kofi has unlocked. Kofi is about to sleep. Alright, then Amma wakes up. Amma is about to lock. So it's almost, she's made a size 2. Um, added 2, made a size 3. Okay, so it seems that they are all adding, adding, but the size is going to be 4, 5, size goes to 6, size goes to 7. So the size is, is increasing bit by bit. Size goes to 8, size goes to 9. Right. So it's, it's behaving the right way. So two people are now what? They are competing. Right. And this is well-behaved code because what? As someone is adding, the other person doesn't want, like the link list. You remember when you're adding something to the end? Someone modifies the, the head, put something there. If there are two people competing, the probability is that someone who put something in will cause an issue and the size will not count properly or the pointer header tail will not point properly. Right. So now you've seen the producer. That means I can what? Make many, many, many producers Right. But what I'm going to add is I'm going to add in a consumer, someone who will also be what? Pulling data from the list. Your question. Okay, so what we'll do is if they are just adding and they are, there's nobody consuming, then it's kind of pointless. It's almost like you're sending mail to a server. But what I'm doing is I'm showing the producer side. I showed you just one person adding. I'm showing you two people adding. It means that what I can make code where two different things are running at different rates. So maybe it's a mail server. So um, you will see this for web servers as well. There will be many, many of them running. So that means different people will be producing things at different rates. But there's something that is shared. In this case, the shared thing is the shared resource. So I'm showing you how you can share a resource between two threads. So if you want to have 
two, three, four producers. This can work. Right. So you can use it for any... Okay, so your question again. Maybe I didn't get your question. <laughs> Oh, so you mean, what if you just have one producer on one end doing all the work, instead of having two producers? Because it's still, one is still having to wait for the other one. Why don't you just one of Okay, so, okay, so there are many, there are many sort of, let's say, okay, there's one, one that I, I hinted at last time, that if, let's say, you're doing video encoding, so that's kind of my, kind of my, my problem, right? If that is my issue, so for example, for some of the software that you buy, they will tell you this is free version. Free version, some of the free, like MySQL, not saying MySQL is not good, it's good. But there are different versions, different editions. And depending on how much throughput, that means how much. So if I have two producers, it's possible to get these running in parallel if I have a multi core system. Right? So maybe I'm reading a file. One person is reading one file, one person is reading another file. Maybe I'm sending emails. So you, you can do a lot of things in parallel. So don't always think of producers as I need just one producer. It's possible to have multiple people working in parallel, utilizing as much of your hardware as possible in the system. So that's why I'm, I didn't just stick with one. I think they, they use one producer, multiple consumers. But I'm showing you that you can have multiple producers solving your problem. Maybe you're doing something encryption. Maybe you're trying to crack, don't crack, trying to crack something. You don't have to have just one producer working at it. You can have two, three of them working on different parts or working on their own parts and giving the work Right. Maybe you're searching for a prime number. I think in this week, there was that issue. Searching for prime, searching for random, trying to find uh, maybe the inverse of something. You can have two, what, two workers working at it. One works, when you find something, he puts it in. The other is also working, when you find something, puts it in. Reducing the size. Yeah. Oh yeah, you, you can do that. I'm just picking the simplest. So please note, I'm just picking the simplest case possible, so people can follow. After this, when I give you an assignment, I expect you to extend this. But by the end, so today, um, well, we have only eight minutes. So I'll try and do the. Someone is still running. Let me stop him. Um, today, what I'll do is I'll add in the consumer. So let's have a consumer work, right? So you can see how producer and consumer can be using the same thing. I have to stop this guy. Please, when you do this and you see something running, you can okay, stop it. Yes, stop, stop. Okay, so now let's go to the consumer, right? So remember, the consumer was somebody who would come, um, lock the resource, uh, remove something from it. But I'm going to have him do the same thing, print out what he's doing before we continue. So um, system, sorry. Print line, consumer about to lock. Let me print his name. This dot my name. Right. It's about to lock. After he locks, has locked. Right. And then he prints out what he removes. And then he can also unlock. He goes to sleep, so there's a point where, sorry, okay, try catch, right? So, sorry, after the try, he's about to sleep. Right? Oh, I think I put in, sorry. I pasted something in the wrong place, okay. Here. Consumer, uh, And then he's going to wake up at the end of the try catch. Right. So I have a consumer who is going to print out. He's locked. He's uh, he's about to lock. He locks it. He removes something from it, and then he unlocks. Okay, so that's what I'm missing. He should say he has unlocked. Okay. Sorry. Okay. After he unlocks, he's going to try and do a sleep. So he's going to sleep. After sleeping, he's going to wake up before he comes back. Right. So in my main, 
I'm now going to add a consumer, right? So um, my consumer come on, my con okay. So consumer there is going to be um, Charles and I keep using Charles too much, right? All right. So he is sharing the same resource. So please note that he just has what? A link to that resource. He's sharing. He's sharing that resource, right? Now, I'm going to create two consumers as well. So one may be Charles and okay, self, consumer one, consumer two. I have five minutes to run this. Right. Hey, what am I? Now, I'm going to create threads out of the consumers, just as I had for the producers. So, first consumer, that's this one. Right. Oh, I should just do a search replace for the word producer consumer here. Um, let's replace, replace, replace. Okay, this is too dangerous. Sorry. I'm not seeing the option to pick. Um, So now I have two producers and also what? Two consumers. Who are all threads? That means I, in total I'm going to have four things. Right. Two people producing at different rates and two people consuming at different rates. So let's run this. Let's hope it doesn't crash. Okay, so I have. Yep, I have to be careful. Let me go back and try and find what happened. So it's very, very dangerous, isn't it? Like first run, something has, sorry, stop it. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, so let's do this. So let me look at my consumer code to see if there's something I'm doing crazy. So I came off, I locked it, removed something, I unlocked. It's very interesting. Why would it be that way? Okay, let's do it. No, but still. So it says no such element. So I'm trying to remove something that doesn't exist. Okay, so let's look through quickly, see what's happening. So Kofi added one. I think I'm at it first, right? Okay, so Kofi went in. Kofi has made the side. Okay, so Kofi went in first. Second was Amma. She has locked the resource. Kofi sleeps. Charles locks. It's about to lock. They didn't get to lock it. Amma has made the size two. Um, Amma has unlocked. Charles has locked. Charles was the consumer, right? He's locked. This one is about to lock. Amma sleeps. Charles removes what Kofi added. This is producer. Kofi added one. Charles get that one off. Okay, he unlocks. Jim Fee also locks, and it says um, Jim Fee removed. So Jim Fee got what Amma added in. Jim Fee unlocks, is about to sleep. How many locks are happening? Okay, so Jim Fee is about to lock. Amma is about to lock. Um, Jim Fee gets to lock. Time is almost up, but I have to find out why. Okay. Hello. The, it shouldn't, whether or not you are awake, so what you, you saw was, even though they were awake, it didn't affect, where's my output? Um, it? Okay, let me stop this and run again. So what you saw was at some point, all of them pile. Okay, this is a different pile. I have to try and fix this. 
at some point, all of them came. If you try to lock and someone else has it, you will not be able to, uh, to proceed. So it's not just about that. I think it's still corruption to do with the link list because in here it's saying that um, remove first, try to remove, and says there are no such elements. So you try to remove something and it, it didn't exist. So I have to check and figure out why. Okay. Before the remover, sorry, let me do this. Before they remove, let me print out what the size of the link list is. Um, oh, yeah, that is stupid, right? I shouldn't try and remove things when there's nothing in the link list. Okay. So, um, that is the solution. So, if my resource dot my data dot size is greater than zero, then I can go ahead and remove something. Else, I can say sorry, consumer found empty list. Wow, so, that, so you see how exciting it can get. And you see, it actually ran for a while. It ran for a while before it crashed. And that means that some of these, please come down. I know time is, yeah, one minute over. Right. So what you can see is for some of these problems, you may not detect them very quickly, right? Unless it runs for a while. Right. So if your plan, so I didn't think of the fact that the remove was going to what was going to be empty. I'd never, I hadn't thought of that. But now I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't do a remove, so it's good we had this error. But it ran for a while before it crashed. Right. So now it's, it seems to be running. Well, it's, it's almost running. But now when they find an empty list, they say so, right? So let me just copy some of this out. All right. So you can see from here now that now and then someone goes and finds an empty. Someone should see an empty. Let me just search for the word empty. Like this one uh, has found an empty list. That means now and then, when you go and find a list empty, you don't do anything. You just go to sleep, and then another person can come. So currently, I have two producers and what? Two consumers. So I'm showing you how you can create applications. So it doesn't have to just be producer, consumer. It can be anything. Maybe you have, um, there are some software where maybe you click something and say submit or send email. That means that when he finishes, he can. That's like a, like a resource. After he finishes, someone else can what can pick some work and continue. Maybe it was after he send the email, send another message. Currently, most of the software use is kind of simple, but I think you can come up with very creative things happening within your application, where two or three things can be sent information from one application. Well, it's the same app, but from one side to the other. Maybe he does some job. When he finishes, he puts in a message to say, "Oh, I finished doing the message." Right. So you can do a lot of things, a lot of interesting things. So with this, please run or write this code for me and submit by Friday. So on Friday, this Friday, you're going to meet with your, your group members, right? So please don't just be doing the group work as much as possible. This is the code for us. Okay, let's do it Monday, right? So let's do it Monday. So on Monday, by Monday, you have an exam. Then you can finish it But Wednesday, you have a quiz for this class. You have a, like a big quiz. Um, so Monday, who has finished this? That's, that's a Wednesday.